We're going to be talking about a medical innovation, some of the new therapies and devices that are helping us with patient care. Importantly, when innovation occurs and we bring together new technologies with new knowledge, new medical knowledge, we actually find new solutions, better solutions that help us in patient care. For example, this ventilator, which weighs one and a half kilograms, is able to ventilate a patient for eight hours. You can do this on battery power only. The whole back side of the ventilator is a battery. And it also includes new technologies for safety so that people that are not that familiar with ventilation medicine and our use of uh, complicated ventilators, the one behind me, can actually default and let the computer do the work. This project was funded by a U.S. government agency called DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. And it's run basically by physicians and engineers for this medical device. The company that's responsible for all the ingenuity, though, is called Automedics. It's a small American company that has produced a number of these ventilators, but this is the most sophisticated. This ventilator does all of the work of this ventilator. Specifically, it matches the respiratory needs of the patient and allows us to adjust all the variables that we need for appropriate ventilation for primary lung injury or for metabolic dis disturbances in the patient as well. We won't tell you how much this ventilator costs, but you'll notice how big it is. We will tell you that the cost of this little ventilator is approximately one sixteenth to one tenth of the cost of that ventilator. And as you can see, it's a lot easier to carry and to handle and to move around with the patient. So let's see how it works. We'll start by just turning it on. And you'll see instantly that there are a bunch of blinking yellow, blinking green lights at the top. So if any one of us was going to ventilate a patient and we weren't sure what we needed to set for our baseline parameters for safety, we could just look at their size, and this is in English, so this is five foot nine inches, and let's pick six feet. So just by hitting this number, the computer asks us to confirm it. And instantly, the default safety venting settings of a six foot, basically 80 kilogram person, are assigned to the ventilator. We'll quiet it down for a second, the alarms. It's alarming instantly, because it's reading the environment and it's telling the operator, the nurse, or the paramedic, or the physician that there is no resistance in the line. So we're going to have to let it make some noise here. It brings in filtered air through a high-grade nitrocellum filtration system and then the exhalation because then you saw how it just pushed a little bit because it senses that it's working now. It's thinking it's pushing against the patient's lungs. And because I'm pressing hard on it, it's thinking the patient has ARDS or stiff lung, so it's trying not to do damage. It's trying to ventilate, but not overventilate. So, and next to it you'll see there's um, portals so that you can add oxygen to it. This ventilator does everything but actually pull oxygen out of the air and concentrate it. Okay, so that's not enough. We have safety, which is good, you know, this default where the computer makes the decisions for what the patient needs up top. And down below is respiratory therapist or physician override. We can do things such as say, I want to increase the respirations. I want to blow off more CO2, for example. Or perhaps our patient is air stacking or not completing their respiratory exhalation. And we've all seen this when the alarms go off on our patients. So we can decrease our respiratory rate, okay? To allow them to exhale all the time. Let's say they are an unusual, they're a male who at six foot is gonna have larger tidal volumes. It can very easily increase by 50 mils at a time the tidal volume that the ventilator will give to the patient each time. The PIP, the peak inspiratory pressures, which we sometimes need, particularly at the initiation of ventilation, are defaulted high at 30. 
But if we have a COPD patient, a patient with emphysematic lung disease, we might want to reduce those to prevent barotrauma and spontaneous pneumothorax. We'd also do this in a post-surgical patient who's had thoracic surgery. And then if we start getting into trouble and our patients become increasingly difficult to ventilate, we might want to increase the PEEP, the post-end expiratory pressure, to splint open those airways. So as you exhale, you're able to make use of all of the lungs volume. And for normal patients, we would start at about five. And if we are dealing with a complicated patient with maybe influenza lung injury or complicated pneumonias or varicella zoster pneumonias, we might go much higher, such as to 10. There are peak setting alarms here that are sensed through the system that allow you to not hurt the patient. So as I took my finger off, it thinks it has much more space to ventilate. So you hurry, it's giving a big ventilation cycle right now. You put your hand over that, you can feel that. Okay. So let's say that you're doing CPR, or you're resuscitating the patient. Turns out in those scenarios, you might not, you do not need those ventilations while you're doing compressions. So in that situation, you go to another function. And you confirm it. And you activate a manual trigger, which allows it to just give, just give breaths in between your compressions at the normal ACLS protocol of two. Okay? So again, where are we sitting in all of this? Is that these new technologies with new thinking allow us to start our designs completely over, to give just what's needed, and to rewrite the rules for our medical devices so that we can get away with smaller, less expensive, and more durable pieces of medical equipment that help our patients that we can use on the ambulance, and which will still work when the power goes out and also work even when our oxygen isn't pressurizing our ventilators if the oxygen levels were to drop in our hospitals. So thank, we'd like to thank Chula Longhorn Hospital and all the staff here for helping us to show this technology from Automedics. All of these values down low. So it's the respiratory rate. A tidal volume, the PIP or peak inspiratory pressures, and the PEEP or the post and expiratory pressure for difficult to oxygenate patients in those with ARDS. And close look up. This is the air intake. And this is the exhalation. This is the oxygen, supplemental oxygen flow. And this is one of the sensors that tells you what's going on with the patient's CO2 and entire oxygen levels. It's got connections so that you can remotely send information, a USB driver, and later the, the unit will be equipped with GPS and send the information to a physician so that lesser trained people can run the ventilated patient and a physician can remotely alter the settings on the ventilator.